Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Sky coming on to talk to you about the equinox of 2020-22, the fall equinox here in the northern hemisphere, the spring equinox in the southern hemisphere. This equinox will actually be happening a little bit later than usual. It's going to be September 25th. Of course, everyone uh, usually thinks of September 21st, but we have a little bit of a lag this year uh, and we will not be having the new moon, the exact new moon in Libra, until the 25th of September 2022. So um, yes, in this video I'm going to be delivering some intuitive messages about the equinox. I will say I'm feeling some major new wind of uh, energy coming in here. I'm feeling that things are about to get very different. I'm feeling that there isn't a lot of context for what we're about to be facing and there's a lot of gaps that have to really be filled in between this equinox and then the subsequent spring equinox of 2023, the astrological new year. So we're going to be talking all about this in this video uh, with a, a bit of urgency, but also a bit of, uh, or I should say, a large uh, amount of tranquility, uh, as I feel this to be the uh, combination of urgency and tranquility coming in here. And that should make for some very interesting and opportune outcomes for all of us, okay? Uh, before we get started, everyone, I do hope that you will hit the subscribe button if you're new, if this resonates. I make a lot of this type of content, and um, also my channel is on Patreon if you want to check out some premium content content below. Um, also, I will only be having one more live premiere in this season next week. Next Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific time will be the finale for this season of live premieres, so I hope you will all be able to come and check that out. Um, as we will be uh, moving into fall, and, and uh, fall is going to be coming with some awesome new content as well on this channel, but the summer season of live premieres, yes, will be concluding as the season is changing. Okay, everyone, let's dive into some really exciting uh, Equinox messages. So um, where do I want to start? I have a brief outline that I will be um, thumbing through here uh, with just a few notes that I wrote down. Uh, but, um, you know, I'm not going to start with that. I just, uh, what I'm feeling on my heart is that really a lot of the impassioned struggles that a lot of people have been going through are just playing over now. Okay, I feel that a lot of people have been in a certain type of romance with a struggle. I feel that a lot of people have been uh, romanticizing the uh, grip that they have on a certain self-reinforced routine that might be more difficult than it has to be. Uh, this is being mirrored by the Saturn-Uranus square, the uh, third exact one, I believe, that will be coming in October, which we've been having since the beginning of 2021, sort of being an orb, uh, which is an example of the chaos that comes from uh, trying too hard on something, from putting too much effort into something, from being perhaps too devoted or too loyal to something that actually might have needed more room or more uh, freedom in order to uh, grow and bloom properly. So we have baby, ba basically um, an overhandling, I feel, that has come up, and this is subsiding this equinox, um, this fall equinox especially is uh, going to be a major recession, I think, for a lot of people when it comes to the grip with which they hold certain things that need to be freer in their lives. So uh, things that need to be free, that's a good thing to be thinking about moving into this equinox, okay? Um, what am I holding too tightly in my life? What do I have a vice grip on that might actually do better with a little bit more freedom, okay? You know, if you think of gardening or agriculture, you have to really know what the plant that you're trying to grow needs. Is this a plant that needs a lot of water, a lot of sunlight, more shade? Basically, I feel that there's been an over-application of certain, like, um, base level ideologies like this plant needs water okay so maybe we overwater the plant or maybe we actually don't know about the plant and it maybe it actually does better in drier circumstances and then we're like depleting our resources we're depleting our water to basically give too much to something that doesn't actually need so much um attention so attentiveness and a flare of uh sort of, what do I want to say? It's like a flare of consistency or a flare of, again, baseline level ideologies that seem good on paper. Like the more I water this plant, the better it does. The more money I have in my life, the safer I feel. The more, um, where we're, we're not really accounting maybe for like overwatering or also then some of the difficulties that can come from like too much money as well, like security threats or uh, more difficult uh, taxation considerations. And uh, again, it's not like we want to reject abundance or we want to reject resources here. But I do think that a lot of people are over invested in 
2D feelings of positivity or 2D feelings of abundance that might not actually bring with it what we think. So basically this equinox, it's a very realistic period of time, I feel, where a lot of people are having to see, okay, this is what it means to be so abundant, or this is what it means also to have overwatered a plant or to have overgiven or over bestowed energy into something, uh, to have broken certain things as well as, as uh, you know, if you've ever done like metal work or jewelry creating, you would know that if you overdo it or if you over construct the wires, they will sometimes just totally break or totally snap in half. Um, that is uh, reinforced by the Saturn Uranus squares. I feel this with infrastructure. I feel this with um, economy. I feel this uh, with um, self-employment or traditional employment where people are trying too hard, okay? There's something that's over uh, um, taxed or, or pushed too much, and then this can really have a, a collateral damage attached to it. And I talked about this in the September comprehensive astrology, and I've been talking about this a lot about how there is maybe a collateral damage coming through here. And the best thing that a lot of us, I think, can do is to um, stop putting so much pressure onto the structures of our lives so that we don't uh, damage them with some sort of idea that that's going to give back to us in a way that it can't. So one of the most uh, beautiful things about this equinox of 2022 is it really is a portal for a lot of people into an easier life experience that gives more in return. Um, for some people, yes, it might mean a pay cut or it might mean that there's less of certain resources that come in, but that might actually give more abundance in the long run with, with less like time loss and less maybe um, feeling of uh, being taxed or feeling or, or you know, physically or just uh, symbolically, <laughs> you know, um, there could be uh, a lot better ways to do things at this point in time, I feel. I feel that there's been a lot of advances in uh, technology or advances that can lead people to have much easier experiences in areas where they used to have to push so hard or try so hard or um, give so much. And um, I've already been preparing you all for the huge eclipse season coming in November of 2022. Um, I started preparing you for this in the full moon in Pisces video, uh, which uh, you can easily click over to my channel and find. It should be the uh, video preceding this one. But uh, in my opinion, it looks like September and October could be kind of just like another day at the office, or it could be a feeling of like uh, fulfilling motions still. But we need to really understand the big change that could be coming in November, and specific, specifically the November, I want to say till about March, uh, November 2022, March to March 2023, uh, intercession is going to be a complete 100% life change for a lot of people. Um, I don't feel this about September or October, but by the time those big Scorpio eclipses start hitting in November, I mean, we really have a different chapter of life, different phase of self-expression, different job for some people, different industry, different, um, also mainly just like different ways of energizing or investing life force energy. This is what the sign of Scorpio is all about. It's about transformation, life force energy, and the way in which uh, things actually happen without such a direct attempt. So a big question that I have for all of you, um, and just to, I think, maybe journal about, it's kind of a good uh, thing to just think about right now. What have I been trying so hard to do head on? Like, what am I pushing so hard for? What am I, what am I setting out for? And what is the direct momentum that I'm trying to establish? And does it make sense? And uh, subsequently, am I also indirectly trying to get places? Am I trying to uh, qualify myself in one territory to be applicable for a totally adjacent territory? Am I trying to build a bridge? Am I trying to get somewhere by um, doing something that I don't have to do in another place? Uh, these are big things that are coming up here, and I hope that I'm wording this in a way that's comprehensible because it's a very important thing that I'm feeling, but it's kind of hard to to talk about. It's kind of like a... Uh, what do I want to say? It's like almost a sideline experience. I've talked a little bit about this over this last year where it's like a lot of people got maybe a little distracted by a sideline experience of their life and they're kind of off the main path. And I feel that as we hit November of 2022, people have to get back on the main path or they will be thrust back onto the main path uh, by the eclipse energy that's coming in there, which is going to really 
I think maybe pull out or take away some of these distraction mechanisms so that people just don't lose so much time off their main path. So if you are someone who resonates with, um, you know, not feeling like you have the confidence to be on the main path right now or feeling like you need to get stronger or you need to be more formidable before you step back onto the main path, this would be the time to start doing that. And I'm sure that a lot of you have already been kind of stepping into that. Um, again, there's still quite a bit of time, you know, as this equinox comes and you might be getting this video as early as like uh, even before the equinox in uh, mid-September. This is a time to go into boot camp for a lot of you and to not keep drawing out this sideline phase or to not keep um, uh, sheltering away from the things that you feel that you need to do with yourself like uh, that are bigger than just uh, daily considerations. Because again, as we cross the equinox every year, we move out of you know, the me, 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 like a small focus, like uh, what feels good to me, what I want to do, what um, is more of like the youthful complex, which is more of a uh, generally like self-surviving, self-serving part of the psychology. And then we move into the collective seventh house and beyond. We surpass the halfway point in the zodiac and we start moving into um, things that get out of the self interest. We start to move into relationships, other people, reputation, uh, public considerations, uh, networks, and um, institutions, things like that. So we get out of the individual and into the collective uh, once we pass into the seventh house, which is what we're doing uh, every fall equinox or spring in the southern hemisphere. Um, so we've had this really opportune time from uh, March 2022 to September 2022 to be in that me, 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 focus on myself, focus on my goals, my aspiration, what I want, what I need, my health, my wallet, my stuff. And that's going to really start subsiding. So for those of you who have some backtracking to do there, or you're still in a very, like a getting your own oxygen mask on per se, that really needs to see a conclusion by November so that uh, you're actually together enough or you're actually uh, breathing well enough and with the proper... Uh, resources to, and this is crazy, but to actually understand yourself or to actually understand how you need to move forward without a lot of afflicted or um, out of sorts, duress filled notions uh, about like self survival or self um, protection. I feel that a lot of people have kind of been desperately trying to protect themselves over the last few years. Uh, so they've been building a lot of constructs in their lives that. Uh, keep them maybe sheltered away or keep them kind of separate from a lot of people. And there's there's a group of people energetically, uh, globally right now that actually are pioneering something there and need to do that. And it, this isn't like blanket a bad thing, like this isn't across the board a bad thing. But for some people it has become debilitated or there's a separatism or a um, wall being built between themselves and like society or the other collectives. Uh, to the point where they start to actually sacrifice certain uh, trajectories that were better for them, or they uh, don't get to benefit from certain uh, positives of relationships. So we definitely see as we hit Libra season here, we hit the new moon in Libra on September 25th, um, where, are we, where we are standing with uh, relationships and um, are we depriving ourselves of relationships? Are we too reliant on relationships? I think there'll be a big rebalancing coming this year when it comes to um, people in our lives because there's a big contingent of people actually who are like too independent or too detached. And then of course there's the polar opposite. So there, these people will kind of move, I think, to the center and there will be more of a uh, balanced approach that will feel more popular or feel more uh, proper with this uh, oncoming time when it comes to how much we share with other people, how much we're inviting other people into our life, and also how much we're willing to forge new connections or new relationships. I think that's going to be a big thing uh, moving towards, uh, really towards the new year um, or into the new year. So as this equinox comes on, we also have a Mercury-Venus conjunction in Virgo, uh, which suggests that we're really wanting to uh, specialize or to uh, really perfect or uh, take our skill sets to a total new place. So I'm seeing a lot of people seeking new certifications. I'm seeing a lot of people, uh, again, uh, seeking to be reinforced by relationships or reinforced by reputation, reinforced by the... Um, 
esteem of other people. Um, it's going to be a little bit difficult without that moving forward from here. Um, I feel that also having Mars in Gemini, right? Neptune in Pisces, Mercury and Venus conjunct in Virgo, this mutable uh, T-square. There's nothing in Sagittarius right now. Uh, really will be hard on people who are too stoic, people who are too uh, stuck in their ways, entrenched in a certain structure or unwilling to adapt, modify, or uh, challenge the previous status quo of their experience, okay? Uh, so that's going to be something that's very impassioned. I'm feeling a lot of passion come up in the collective consciousness about this kind of a uh, fight or battle between like, I want security, safety, and uh, privacy, but then I also want a new world or a new um, way to do things and new people, new experiences, new, new established uh, feeling of connection to network. So that's a battle of worlds, I feel, coming in uh, into this equinox, and it's moving more in favor to that second portion, to that new uh, structure, to that new uh, contact point with uh, relationships and networks versus the um, independence at all cost uh, thing that was coming up over the last five or six years. So I think this is something that is... Um, for quite a few people, and uh, it's it's great if this doesn't resonate for you, but I do need to speak about this just a little bit. For a, a quite small group of people, this is really traumatic to go from this place where like they used to feel so empowered through independence, or they used to feel like um, doing everything themselves, or doing uh, everything without the support of other people was such an empowering process, or such a uh, important leg of their journey uh, to self fulfillment or self. Uh, just selfhood, you know, uh, as this paradigm kind of shifts to a slightly more relationship based and slightly more consensus based paradigm, it's not going to necessarily be this way forever, you know, like thing, things change. I do feel that people really have their previous self empowerment schemata turned completely on its head. And there's this new journey or this new um, portal shaping up about, wow, I have to go through something totally different now, or I have a completely different process or new thing to learn about how I reinforce my feelings of uh, empowerment, okay? it There are a few people that are going to have a really, really uh, hard time, especially if they're very stuck in the mind, especially if they're unwilling to modify or to take action uh, with this and try to maybe like, I don't know, push further into their self-employment or push even further into their like um, material side to maybe reinforce their feelings of security, like, wow, I've got to like double up my income now, or I've got to like invest even harder to like remind myself like how well I'm doing. Um, here we see the North Node in Taurus and the um, uh, the previous astrology we've been having for this last year that's so materially focused and so um, money centric as well, and uh, you know, power very connected to feelings of ownership or. Uh, property or money so that that could be a compensation grid for a lot of these super independent people right now as certainly yes in, in these uh, in the economies of today independence is very determined by things like income things like uh, ownership things like uh, you know um, retirement and uh, stuff like that and I do feel that a lot of people for example in like the fire movement or people who have reached a certain level of financial security are asking the same questions uh, as people who are trying to do that Okay, guys, that's huge. That's huge. You might have to go back and listen to that for a second. So people who've like already done it, people who've achieved the like uh, financial stability, people who've achieved the passive income, people who have the um, uh, whatever it is that they have, are asking the same questions as people who are trying to build that. And that to me is a big concern. It's a big concern about like, what are we actually doing and why are we doing it? when we're asking the same questions from two such different material planes, okay? Again, it's kind of reinforcing the fact that, you know, certain material levels may not mean anything to certain aspects of the human condition. And then a lot of us have this uh, major crisis that comes up here where it's like, whoa, I've been devoting, sacrificing even so much of my own time to build something or to achieve a certain level that's going to have me asking the same questions anyway, okay? This is a big thing. This is a huge thing. Um, so why not ask the questions now? Why not figure out what we want to do now and do that instead? Um, you know, it's really interesting when people, and I've, I've talked around this quite a bit on the channel over this last year as well, 
uh, when people are in their their highest expression, when people are vibrating highly, when people are doing what they're passionate about, doing what they love, uh, the money comes through or the material works itself out or they somehow um, are not going to find themselves uh, really struggling that much. But when you have a poverty wound or when you have a money wound or when you have these these things that kind of compel you to like do what it takes to um, fix that rather than actually move towards what you want, well, that becomes like the devil card in the tarot. That becomes a certain like a rigid uh, construct or something that we get really chained to that is not what we think it is or it's not uh, actually solving uh, the problems that we think it is. And then we have Equinox of uh, 2022 and the uh, Scorpio eclipses coming uh, by November. Okay, um, a lot of us have not even experienced in a direct or conscious way the impact of the South Node in Scorpio. The North Node in Taurus is very distracting. <laughs> um, it's something that people, a good way to articulate the way that this works is like, a lot of people get very distracted uh, by money. So if you offer somebody a $300,000 salary, they might not even think about what the job entails. But then we have what the job entails and we see the South Node in Scorpio. We see, okay, it changed my life in this way. By working this job, there are things that I've had to sacrifice and things that I can't do. Um, so this is like the, to me, the interplay between this uh, nodal axis. And we're going to see in November of 2022 uh, what it meant to actually say yes to certain things or what it meant also uh, to be so empowered. Okay, so we're gonna we have this. Okay, again, I'm just I'm just coming back to this again. Schemata of power being turned on its head. So what used to make us feel so bold and powerful has, for some people, come at a cost, or there's something that they didn't realize they had to sacrifice in order to do it. And this is hard. I know this is hard for a lot of people to think about. Where it's like, gosh, I thought that I was getting myself into something that was an empowering thing, but actually look at what that cost or look at what that meant. Again, I'm seeing images of the devil card in the tarot. <clears throat> but also like the eight of pentacles, you know, where you have this connection to production or you have this connection to um, outputting something or, or working so hard to create something. And we might not really know what that's actually generating in totality until we get on the other side of it. Um, so as I'm talking about this, I feel it's evoking a foreboding feeling, but it's not meant to be like that. I mean, yes, this this time window between like September and December can be quite foreboding for some people as the conclusions that are being drawn are also huge. Okay, we have people who are never gonna be in this uh, state again, or people who are never going to be in this um, uh, life chapter again. And that's such a uh, such a celebration to be had for some of them because it, it, can, it can be on either side, you know, people totally getting out of trauma, people totally uh, getting out of a, a cycle of their life that they never thought they would be out of. Some people like, uh, you know, that feeling of graduation. But, um, and then it, it can be harder too. It can be like um, no longer feeling like the uh, thing that you worked so hard on for so long is going to be good for you in the long run. Or it, and then you, then you have like hard choices to make. Um, there are going to be hard choices, I think, for a lot of people, and then for, for some people they're quite easy, actually. Uh, but they're definitely something that you could reference as, as a difficult choice, uh, just b based on uh, these uh, feelings of power or these feelings of independence being uh, reversed or being upside down now compared to what they used to be. Uh, so a lot of people might have to build from the ground up, or um, there's just a risk or a chance that they have to take in... Um, evolving or trusting, okay, evolving and, tr I want to say evolving and trusting, okay, evolving and trusting that the way that they change or the choices from uh, this equinox to the next one, big time of choice, will show them being or passing through a rite of passage that they are held by the universe in, okay, that's hard for people right now. Like they don't maybe trust that the universe is going to hold them, that they're going to be protected or that they're going to be safe as they move from this uh, life base to the next life base, okay? And you'd be surprised um, how much like this is the essence of humanity or how much this type of, uh, for some people, major, majorly fearful uh, experience, especially super independent control oriented people, uh, you'd be surprised at how enjoyable these rites of passage can be or how much these can be like the things that you look back on 
uh, with a feeling of um, true self-empowerment as opposed to those more rigid or more predictable yet um, unsoulful aspects that we could have compensated in instead. So that's definitely what I would say for those of you who are feeling fear in like moving to the next stage or feeling fear in um, actually claiming your next level of power. Because uh, it's interesting how also people who fear to lose power or people who fear chance or risk, um, especially when it's not impulsive or when it's something that they've been knowing would come on for a long time, uh, those people might actually be very disempowered, okay? Because from a place of empowerment, we don't really have quite as much fear for changes uh, because a, a feeling of personal empowerment should support changes. It should support a natural, well-planned, um, you know, necessary changes. And then that definitely begs the question, like, are some of these things that we think have empowered us illusions? Because uh, they, if they really contradict certain changes or if they keep you trapped or if they keep you in a certain expression, output, or um, caricature that you don't feel comfortable uh, transcending, that is, uh, to me, not something that's evocative of a feeling of personal power that seems more like a prison or that seems more like um, uh, some type of uh, shackle. Okay, so we need to see that for what that is at this point. And I do think that the equinox, especially this intercession between um, uh, no, the equinox in September to, yes, the next equinox is going to drag out for some people, but really even between now and the end of November, a lot of people are going to be totally revealed like to what degree certain constructs or entities in their lives are empowering or are uh, shackling or entrapping. Okay, um, and there can be a major... Uh, mix up for people. This is very common, and the tarot really shows this about how sometimes we can think that a shackle or something that is entrapping is actually empowering. Again, it's the devil archetype in the tarot. Um, it's quite a few of the other ones, though, too. It's in the lovers, it's in the hero font, it's, uh, I mean, where else is it in? I don't know. It's in uh, the Six of Pentacles as well. Um, there are a lot of archetypes that show this, and we have to really scrutinize what is giving to us, why we're being given, and uh, what it means, and, and these, uh, the longer running meaning of certain uh, things which have previously felt so empowering to be given by. Okay, and uh, one of the things that I will wrap up on for this Equinox video is uh, continuing from Virgo season and uh, keeping consistent with what you know is... Um, unarguably a positive implement into your life. So what uh, a lot of the end of August and September was bringing in with the astrology was um, switching gear from certain like addictive or unhealthy uh, implements and then really replacing those with more positive uh, daily habits. So I think that these small daily habits are going to really echo out um, and we need to be facing the eclipse season of November with the uh, beginnings of the positive results. Uh, from those habits. So, um, you know, definitely for a lot of people waking up earlier, um, better diets, better budgeting, better, uh, just better also consistency within thinking or consistency within uh, also building yourself up or certain mantras or certain certain reliances on long-term momentum, as I was also talking about recently, you know, really, really leaning into that long-term momentum and not having to try so hard, not having to be too interventionist. Uh, there is also a weird uh, kind of uh, battle coming up I see for a lot of people about like, okay, do I handle this crisis with a peaceful intention or do I um, accept more conflict or do I really directly perhaps tell people that I'm not satisfied or that I'm not doing well and perhaps risk greater conflict? Um, I do think that a lot of this is resolved through certain uh, implementations into people's lives that, that show a better small uh, action every day, which will lead to a bigger reality of a well-being with which you might feel more confident or more, um, or you might feel more ease at broaching certain difficult subjects or planning um, and also strategizing about better ways forward from these healthier viewpoints rather than from these compensatory viewpoints. So anyway, everyone, I'm going to wrap up on that note. Uh, 
also it's, it's wanting to come through uh, as we move this equinox. It's just, it's just important to know that this really is a changing portal, okay? Um, I don't think that by the next equinox, so spring equinox 2022, and certainly not in through the, the time that we have the nodal axis shift to Libra and Aries in July of 2023, um, this is not just a small change. This is a very big uh, rite of passage for a lot of people and a big change in status, a big switch up of how they're um, relying and uh, basing certain efforts in their lives. Um, so it's just good to know that. And it's good, I think, to feel empowered by that guaranteed change or to feel empowered by the way that the universe supports you versus having to be so interventionist and everything or having to be so... Um, having to hold it all or having to be in charge of it all or having to wield every single second of your own well-being, uh, that hyper-independence becoming such a detriment to feelings of peace and feelings of universal support, uh, that's such an important thing to switch up and turn it on its head, okay? Turn it upside down. Like, how much can I actually lean into the feeling of universal support? How much can I lean into my long-term momentum? How much can I benefit or um, make right through these grander feelings of support versus um, older structures or things which are no longer beneficial, things, again, that make us uh, feel that, uh, you know, devil archetype in tarot uh, very negatively. Uh, so it's definitely a time of trust in the universal and trust in, um, in higher forces or trust in more benefic, more peaceful, more um, high vibrational forces rather than uh, low vibrational ones and uh, darker ones. So I will leave you all on that note. Thank you so much for being here. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. Um, it's a great uh, season on my channel. I'm planning a lot of really exciting content for the fall and the winter as well of 2022. So come check it out. Uh, be sure to turn on the bell notification so you get notified when I post. Uh, next week is the final live premiere of this season. So I hope you will all uh, make some time to come and say hi. It's at 6 p.m. Pacific time, uh, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern time uh, next Friday. So come check that out. Um, and all the other links are below Patreon, Twitter. I'm on a few other places where you can keep up with uh, updates if you are so inclined to do so. And um, I hope you all have a wonderful equinox and thank you so much for uh, checking it out. Have a great time. Much love. Bye.